Hello, this is David Birch uh, again on the, the uh, OpenCPN Cell Nav, Celestial Navigation Plugin Part 3. And this Part 3 will look at what is uh, actually a very unique, well, not very unique, is that make sense? A unique uh, feature of the um, of this program. In fact, I know a lot of star uh, uh, celestial navigation programs, and I don't know anyone that uh, any of them that uh, provides this type of computation. Namely, it um, calculates a a locus of points of equal bearing to a body. Um, causes the azimuth function. So anyway, that's what we're going to show. It's uh, basically working a great circle computation backwards, but it's, a, it's an interesting solution. It's uh, sort of rare to be used in practice. However, it's not at, out, not at all out of the question, and it brings up some interesting points about how celestial navigation works. So here is the... Um, uh, here is the here is the plug-in, and the other two videos show about that logging and that. And I've added three sites, and I've chose a, chose three sites that I know will be uh, we be, be good sites. And let's check those just from the basic. Here are the three sites being done just by the so-called altitude method. The altitude, right? If you do something new, you have a choice. I have an altitude method. I have the azimuth method, and I have a lunar distance method. Uh, we've talked about the altitude. I'm going to show one more. Now we're going to do today, uh, right now, I'm going to do azimuth business. But let's start out with the altitude, altitude. So that's what we're doing now. So the altitude, I've checked those three. So then these are three sites. And I'll just zoom in here in the Pacific. And they're, they're obviously going to be good sites because I picked them. I, I chose them to be good sites. Okay. And so there's three. And they, they uh, cross at a very, very small. Well, they, they cross at the right spot. And then uh, I can tell you then the other thing about how do you make those because we need to do that. So now let's look here at this page. This is a, uh, from a, a output from the U U.S. Uh, Naval Observatory. And we use this so much, and it's a complicated link, actually. And so we use it so much we made a shortcut so we know how to get there easily ourselves. So here's the link. We've got today's date, November 5th, 310 UT uh, Universal Time. And we took DR here in the ocean. Uh, that's, this, that's that place right there, 30, 39 north, 142, 30 west. And we chose three objects, three, three bodies to do sites with, Mars, Mirafac, and Vega. And maybe later I'll come in and show. We have a program of our own called Star Pilot, and it tells you the best sites to take and so it's very easy to search through it. Uh, it computes all the best sites but in this case what you want is you want three stars or combination of stars and planets that are about uh, equal distant uh, equal equal distant in bearing you want the bearing as close to 120 degrees apart as possible and you want three stars three bodies and then ideally at about the same height and ideally you know above 15 and below say 75 or 80. However, this program can uh, handle the, uh, uh, just about any height pretty well. Okay, so so here are the ones. We've got Mars, Fermac, Mer I mean, <laughs> Murfac, and Vega, three stars. Now, this program calculates, once you tell it, once you tell it a time and date and a place, it tells you the height and bearing of all these stars, all these uh, navigational stars. So Mars is going to have a height of 40, point, 40 degrees, 46.9 minutes, and it's going to have this bearing. Now, in principle, if we were there sitting at this point, that's the whole way celestial navigation works. If I'm sitting right at that point, at that time, at this time, and I take away the corrections of the sextant errors and how high I am above the water and so forth, then I'm going to read an angle above the water uh, of the of the star. The star, this Mars planet, is going to be 40 degrees, 46.9 minutes above the above this uh, horizon. And here's the point for our azimuth method, and it's going to be in bearing 157.8 degrees. Now. 
Uh, oh, and likewise, if I look in another direction over here, if I look in direction 040.9, 40.9 degrees northeast there, that at 15 degrees, 53.5 minutes, then I'm going to see this star Mirfak and so forth in Vega. So there's the three of them. But here's the point. I know now the exact bearings. And I, I'm going over this in detail so you can practice with this unusual function. This is a very unusual function in this uh, navigation program, this plug plug in star uh, star uh, no, what's it? Uh, open CPN celestial navigation plug in. This this azimuth function is very very unique. And so I'm trying to give some background on how you can practice with it to see what all it does. And so here's now these bearings. So if I were sitting there, I would do that. Now, uh, so that's where I'm getting the data. And that's why these are very good fixes. So this is a calculated height. Then if you haven't used this before, this is actually the sum of all the corrections. So if you, if you apply this correction, actually you do it backwards, but if you apply this correction to this height and then put in your index correction and your um, height of I dip correction, then you get exactly, and that's what I did. I corrected all these sites. So these are actually, in, in that sense, perfect sites. They should be bang on the money right there. So they are. And uh, so that's that. And so there we see we get a good fix. The other thing we can do while we're here, let's just do this. Up, oh, I buried that guy. Let me just bring him over here. I want to show that this is also a very nice place. So you can check if you have any doubts about the almanac. It, it looks like the almanac is calculated just right in this program. But let's just take Mars, for example. And then you click this Mars open. And then you look at calculations. And right up here at the top is what the plugin has found for the almanac data. And so you can go over here and look for Mars. And you see it says it's 125 degrees, 12.8 minutes for the GHA, 125, 12.8. Here is south 1540.4, south 1540.4. So you can check all these, all the bodies. And we did the last couple examples we did back in 1982 because we did a voyage. Uh, the, the last two videos I did were looking at data from 1982. And I checked that, and it was spot on then too. So... You can feel confident that the uh, um, that the almanac in this in this uh, program is uh, calculating the right values. All right, so that is that. Now, so what's unique here? So here, let's just say we did this Vega. So we have this site of Vega over here, and the way this is working is this is this program. First of all, there's the ring. That's the let me go in here. And this the first thing this does, it looks up that GHA and declination. That's basically this point. That's the that's the point right on Earth. Um, that's the point. Um, let me stop for a minute here. Okay, I'm back. I had a phone ring. Um, so uh, so the way this program works is it calculates, it looks up in the, al or it doesn't look up in the almanac, it has a mathematical way to compute the location of these celestial bodies. And this one is right here. And I went ahead and put these in here. I can go, let's see, that's a waypoint vega. There, that's that one. So there's where this vega is. That's the data point that's right in that computation, la uh, declination. The declinations of latitude, the GHAs of longitude. And then this circle of equal altitude is uh, everybody on this circle measures at that time, at that 310 UTC, everybody measures exactly that same height. Now, as people over here in Japan, they would be looking east to see that star at that same height. Whereas the people here off California, they'd be looking west, but they'd see it exactly the same height, but a different azimuth. And these guys that way looking north, and so forth. So this is this called circle of equal altitude, and everybody gets the same height, they just look in different directions. Now, so if we then, this program can then calculate from here, if I go to the azimuth, Azimuth, turn on the azimuth. Now what it has done, oh wait, which azimuth did I turn on there? That doesn't look right. I turned Mars. I wanted Vega. 
Okay, that looks a little bit better. Yeah, Vega. So this is, and we have to keep in mind, these are great circles. I'll show this in a minute. that will make it clearer. But these are great. That's why this is such a weird curve. But this is actually the locus of points. All the points along here will have exactly the same bearing to... Um, to the uh, vega. So the way that we get this number on this calculation is we go up here and we say we're going oh, to say vega, vega, azimuth. Okay. So we go here and the site that we're entering, we put a we now choose uh, azimuth here, we got azimuth, and then we choose vega. And what you're putting in here is the bearing that you get with your compass. And look, this 29, and I know what that is, right? If you come back here, the bearing to Vega was 29.6 degrees. So I put it in there as if I knew it, as if I had a magic compass that's going to measure that precisely. Now, I, it's not quite as bad as uh, the write-up in the book claims that this is totally undoable. Well, it's not quite that bad. Uh, a normal magnetic compass is not going to be very good, but um, you get on a ship with a gyro repeater, gyro compass repeater, they can measure a bearing to a star. Uh, well, it depends on how high it is. At a lowish, lower star, lower star, they can measure that bearing. Well, even fairly high. Some of them can go a little higher. They can measure that bearing to within a few tenths of a degree. And it's dependable. It's actually uh, strangely dependable. So, and they do it routinely. In fact, it's part of the regular uh, watch, watch, uh, part of the watch duty is to ch check the gyro compass with the North Star. And then you look up the North Star to see what side, it, you know, what the exact bearing to the tenth of a degree and where it is. So that's all doable. So this is uh, this is actually doable. So I put this 20, 20 seconds in there. That's like point, what, point three degrees? That's probably re relative. So that's where this number comes from. This is as if I magically had a gyro compass, and a gyro compass, I looked at that, uh, which, what are we doing here, Vega, and I measured the bearing of Vega, and I got that. So that's what this is. Now, uh, we on a small yacht at sea, what we might be doing is using something like a hockey puck. And if you're using a hockey puck, and you, don't have to, you just have to go out and practice with this. Now that you have this neat program that will actually do this azimuth thing, you can go out and just take your take your hockey puck compass or something equivalent the hockey pucks are very good and if you practice with it measure the take the bearing to the north star do the north star then look up the north star in the almanac and so forth and be sure you're doing it right you know and so forth study how well you can do it but you you might be able to on land on land with care be able to get uh, certainly within a degree and maybe a fraction under a degree but that's about it and so then you can play with this program. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a, it'd be, it. You can solve what he's done. You can solve it manually, but it's a very tedious process, uh, frankly. Uh, so there you go. So, so in that sense, then, we could do, we're doing, uh, we're doing here then what would be a one-body fix. So let's say you're out here on your boat and you're totally socked in you're totally socked in, you want to navigate, you're totally socked in, you can only see one thing. So normally you see Vega, and you see the horizon below it, so the normal, sort of normal navigator without this program, he'd take one sextant sight of that, and he'd get an LOP, a line of position. He'd get what we had equivalent just to, uh, just to this, right? He'd have this line. He knows he's somewhere on this line, and you can do that without any bearing whatsoever. Then you bring out your high, your accurate compass. You bring out your. Am I turning on? Oh, I have trouble here. There, uh, there. I turn on. Uh, I, I turn on my. Uh, get out my hockey puck, and I measure the bearing. Then I can actually get a fix. Now, keep in mind, that's not going to be. I assume these numbers translate right. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to the M key again to see what the width of this is. See, that's 28 miles. That's 28 miles. So you see? So that's, uh, you're not getting any kind of like high precision fix here with this. 
with you know and that's about the best you can hope for again this is a, this is about what the best we can hope for you see and so what do we got here m you on here to here still 22 miles anyway something to play with now so there's another thing so let's just say now that okay so you've done that and this is then what you would be doing with this you're looking at a fix you were using the uh, azimuth and the bearing, the azimuth and the height of one object. So that's one. That's a unique kind of fix. Now, suppose you don't have any section at all, but you just have this accurate compass. Then you don't have this guy, but then you can do the other bodies like that. You see, and again, your fix is not very good because, well, you'd you'd have to just take a look here. These two aren't that bad. Pretty. These two aren't that bad. The one that's off is this one over here. Let me turn on some things to show you what's going on. Uh, let's go turn on the um, Mirfac and Mars. Okay, so you see here's the, um, here are the bodies for those. And um, let me turn on, well, okay. So you see that, and the, this distortion comes about because of these are great circle, great circle. When you see, when you're looking at this mirror fact from here, let me put on another. I made some other pictures here. Let me go turn this on, this on, and go up to the routes. Mars, mirror fact, Florida. Let me just turn all these on here. Okay, so now it's kind of a mess, but so here you are, and here is the direction. Now this can't quite do it, but if you looked out, these are now the how the direction. If you're here and you're looking at Mirfac over here, you're not looking this way. You're actually great circle looking up over. You'd be looking up this way. So this direction from here, if you go in here. You see that direction right there is about 41 degrees. Now, what do we know? See, that's not really accurate. That's a that's a trouble here with this method. Mere fact, it's well, it's not bad. 40.9, 40.9. So that's right. So this is uh, that's uh, 41. Yeah. So that's pretty close. So that's the direction you're looking on a great circle route to this star. This is the geographical position of that star right there. Now, the thing I wanted to show here is that if you go over here now, look at down in Florida. In Florida, you see, now I don't have this quite right, but you see here this angle. These people are also seeing it at about, it's 43, but um, this is not, not the right, exactly the right great circle projection on here but you see the whole point is in principle he would also be seeing it exactly at this 40.9 then you go clear up here to Alaska and you look at the same thing you see his here's 42 see 42 degrees so this this that accounts for this very unusual uh, the way the math and the how the uh, uh, great circle viewing of bearings and the uncertainty in the bearings propagate, but that's what that's what this is. That's what this routine is. is a very unique function that calculates the um, locus of points that has the same bearing at the same time. So in principle, you could uh, you could just play with that. Get out your now that you have this tool, I wouldn't want to do this math by hand, um, or by calculator even, and I wouldn't want to write the code myself, or ask somebody to help me do it. Uh, but it's already here written for you. So you can get out your hockey puck compass and take some bearings to a few stars and come in here and play with this and see how well you can do. And that's the way this function works, and I'll, and I'll let it go at that. Let's see. Oh, the only, I wanted to say one other thing that was extremely frustrating that took me a long time. And I want to, I want to be sure to say that so, I, so you don't, let's see, what's this, marks? Okay, that's not it. Uh, here. Here's something. Look at this. Uh, let me just close down a couple of those and see which one do we have here. We have this one called Mars. Well, I'll tell you the one that was, no, it's a Vega that was just through it. I mean, a, a, a mere fact, mere fact. Okay, so this guy. So look, 
when you do this, when you say new site, when you click this, you see this, the default, for some reason, the default has that magnetic. And if that goes magnetic, everything does not work. Because basically, in celestial navigation, there is no magnetism. So in, in one sense, one could argue that any celestial navigation program, the word magnetic should not be there anywhere. But it is, and so it also can cause trouble. Because if that's there, you see, okay, what happens is it'll rebuild this, and now nothing lines up. And I couldn't figure out. For the longest time, I had no, no, nothing was lining up. And that was a simple problem. So just when you do this, just be sure that there's no magnetism. In celestial navigation, there is no magnetism. All right, that's the end.